Welcome everyone, I'm Kevin Carpenter, volunteer at CPPCon, and we're getting ready for CPPCon 2022, which I believe we have down as 14 days away. And this morning, I'm talking with one of the Academy instructors, Klaus Eagleberg, and welcome Klaus, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Did, did I did I get the, I, I know I got the last name a little wrong, I apologize. <laughs> Eagleberger in German, yeah. which is hard to pronounce for English people, I know. So think about the eagle, the bird, and yep. think about burger. This is perfectly fine. It's not correct. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. So Eagleberger is fine. That's uh, and that works. It's kind of funny. I was uh, so after you know we recently saw each other at CPP on C, which yes. uh, was an excellent conference, and we were uh, and so as I told you, I was over in Germany for the week after that, and and I have to say it, it was a beautiful trip and. And I need to learn my pronunciations better. But what we're here for is your class you're doing this year um, at yes. CPPCon uh, on site, right? It will be on site, which is a great, uh, great thing indeed. I know that online is so much easier for many people, but being in the same room with uh, people usually turns out to be a better class. This is my experience. It's so I, much more intense, so much uh, more direct, definitely better. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree. The so. I, you know, I've, I've taken your class before and, you know, the ability, I think it's just more, so I'm going to promote your class because I yep. love it. Um, but to your point, it's like, we did a talk, you know, you and I interviewed before doing the online and, and I, you know, during 2021 and everybody really made it work. Um, mm -hmm. Even for me at my office, you know, I used to be in an office like a lot of people. And then once COVID hit, we're not there. Mm -hmm. And, and we can still share some code across the screen and it's still reasonably easy with tools like Slack or Discord or, you know, but it's just not the same as being able to, you know, just kind of roll over on the chair and say, hey, can you look at this? You yep. know, and it's, um, and yeah, of course, and so there, there will be hands-on uh, programming exercise in my class. And for me, it's so much easier to just walk to somebody, look over the shoulders and say, oh, here, you have to do something uh, to make it work instead of hoping that everybody will get it right. Yeah, definitely so much easier. And the hands-on parts of your classes, I think, is one of the best parts because you can watch something on a video, but until you actually do it, it's just not the same thing. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Um, once you've actually done it yourself, you realize that uh, things are easier, simpler, et cetera. So um, you get a much better feeling of the result. So you've been teaching this class for a while. I mean, six years now, I think. I think it wasn't six, but probably close to that. Four or five years. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Okay. No, um, that's fine. I was going by. I, yeah, I was. I've just been trying to remember. It's, you seem to have been an instructor for a long time. But talk about how the class has grown. Like, you know, because you're obviously adding stuff as new things come out from our standards. But I mean, just the experience and knowledge, I'm sure, makes the class and, and the skills grow with it. Absolutely. Um, I think mostly I still stick to the same topic because I, I feel this is just super important. Um, unfortunately, in C++, we tend to talk about features and standards very, very often. And we never really talk about structure of code, uh, mm -hmm. the design of the code. And so this is why I stick to this one topic. I believe it's actually the, the one thing that makes projects succeed. If you have the right structure, the right dependencies in your, in your code base, it will work like a charm, even if you do not perfectly use the new standard. But if you have a bad structure, even the new standard will not help you. Uh, and so this is what I keep uh, talking about. I feel it's just super important, too important to miss. But of yeah. course, there is, there's changes in the standards. There is changes in the, the way we do things. And this is now how I update the class. So this year, um, for instance, I will talk a little more about um, a couple of C plus plus twenty things that hit, but mm -hmm. well, as I said, it's mostly about structure. It's mostly about the dependencies, and so just as all, every year, um, I've selected a couple of design patterns. We'll talk about how they help to actually um, reduce dependencies, how to break dependencies. So what I try to do this year, and I think this is more pronounced than the last years. I try to talk a little more about singleton and what you can do to break these kinds of dependencies and these, these global dependencies. Um, there's actually a very nice way of doing this in a very simple manner. So the, the, the usual advice, the common advice is don't use singletons, but unfortunately 
<laughs> Sometimes is, you have to. <laughs> yeah, there is uh, global aspects in your code, like memory, yeah. like uh, the logger, like um, um, yeah, uh, the, the big configuration that you need to use everywhere. How do we deal with these global aspects? Uh, while I believe that the original single is indeed not a good idea, there is ways how by proper design you can actually reduce the dependencies quite a bit, quite significantly. And in the classes that I've taught before, I got the feedback that has indeed helped people a lot. Um, I, I remember that portion of the class. And I mean, that's been a couple of years. I think I took your class in 2019, but I do. I remember the, the singleton pretty well. Um, the visitor pattern, the way that you showed to do the visitor pattern, I'll really enjoyed singleton. that one. But I think your point about the... Um, you know, about the design patterns and just how they're kind of, you know, whether or not there's a new feature in C++ or not, the ability to use those patterns and use them well can really affect the quality and the stability and, and such of your code. Absolutely. So for, for me, it's mainly about changeability, extensibility, and testability, of course. So these three, um, this is the decisive things. If you can still change things easily, if you can extend things easily, and if you can test your code, things are rather good. This is exactly where usually problems creep in. And yep. believe it or not, you, you do use design patterns in your daily work virtually every oh, yes. single day. Um, there is so many design patterns that people just don't recognize as design patterns. Yeah. So the strategy design pattern, for instance, there's indeed hundreds of occurrences in the standard library, just not by inheritance hierarchies, but by means of templates, mm -hmm. hundreds of them. And this is one aspect that I really want to show. Now, you use design patterns a lot. You should recognize them and use them explicitly. You should know what you're doing by naming them correctly, by um, using them on purpose you know, um, yep. to, to create a specific kind of dependency. Yeah. So design patterns, I mean, you've you've worked in this area for some, so long now. You're actually, you've got a book coming out, right? Correct. So I've written a book about this topic and it should come out in September. I hope so. It might be delayed a little bit, but um, I hope that it can actually hit the bookshelves in at latest October. Um, so a little later for CPPCon, unfortunately, this is what I was hoping for, that I would have the first printed version at the uh, at the um, first day of the class. Yeah. But of course, I can just now tell people if um, this was not enough, if you want uh, to learn about more patterns, mm -hmm. if you want to dig deeper, then now here's a reference that you can look up. Uh -oh. I'm excited to get, so I already put in a pre-order because that's where I'm like, after taking your class and seeing all of your talks, Klaus, of uh, working yep. with you, I'm excited to to have that as a book. Because for me too, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a, I learned by doing all the way up in my programming career. So I, I didn't go through the four year computer science. And so your class was always especially useful for me because those design patterns and such and more of the structure those were parts where I was weaker. And, and so I always appreciated your, your talks and, and yeah, the class with it as well. That's great to hear. So do you have any talks you're doing this year too? I have three talks. Um, again, one talk in the back to basics track, yep. which is uh, by now that the track that I organized by the way. Oh, that's um, right. Yep. Yeah. So uh, it's a pretty important track from my point of view because um this is the basics. This is what everybody should have a firm grasp on. Yeah, I will myself talk on value semantics, mm -hmm. but there will be 13, I believe, other talks by various C++ experts on, well, all kinds of basic topics. So really, really good track. And we'll give two talks in the software design track again. One talk about the type ratio design pattern, a second part to the talk that I did last year. Mm -hmm. And also my uh, uh, my visitor talk was accepted. Ah, this was right. a little surprising. This was a um, a, a test, mm -hmm. um, but apparently it was uh, my, my formulations were good enough so that uh, the program committee felt it's a good addition. And I believe it's actually not something that everybody knows pretty well. Some do, but there is a lot of little details that you can uh, indeed talk about. So I believe yeah. this is one of the most interesting talks that I give this year. Nice. Well, I look yeah. forward to it. So 14 days or so, I guess we will see you at the Gaylord in Denver and exactly. look forward to having a great conference. I'm looking forward to this as well. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much, Klaus. We'll talk more soon.